Welcome to another thrilling episode on Crimecast, where we delve into the dark world of true crime. Join us as we investigate chilling cases, dissect criminal minds and seek justice for the victims. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest episodes. Are you ready to embark on this gripping journey with Crimecast? Let's begin. Brace yourself for five chilling true crime stories, serial killers unmasked. These are the stories that reveal the sinister nature that resides within the shadows of society. Are you ready to confront the monsters that once lurked in plain sight? These are the tales of horror and resilience that will haunt your nightmares. Without any delay, let's dive in. Our first chilling tale takes us to the sun-soaked streets of Los Angeles in the 1980s, where fear ran rampant. Brace yourselves as we delve into the twisted mind of a serial killer who terrorized the streets of Los Angeles. In the scorching summer of 1985, dread paralyzed the city of Los Angeles. Richard Ramirez, aka The Night Stalker, started his reign of terror by stalking three neighborhoods looking for his next victims. His heinous crimes, which included murder, rape and burglary, were all carried out with a sadistic flair that frightened the entire neighborhood. Ramirez committed increasingly terrible crimes, leaving a path of carnage and destruction in his wake. Under cover of night, the night stalker entered homes with ease leaving a sense of dread and horror in its wake. All those who lived under the shadow of his terrible presence were terrified since he picked his victims at random, adding to the fear. But amid the confusion, there was a gleam of optimism. The neighborhood banded together in an effort to track down this elusive predator and prosecute him. People started being more cautious, watching out for one another and assisting the police. Night Stalker's terror reign finally came to an end in August 1985. After a botched burglary attempt, a daring group of bystanders who recognized Ramirez from his police sketch managed to apprehend him. The city celebrated the apprehension of this evil killer, and the streets erupted in relief and joy. In the rolling hills of Tuscany, Italy, our next story unfolds. Our story begins in the late 1960s when the idyllic countryside surrounding Florence became a hunting ground for a merciless killer. The monster of Florence targeted young couples seeking romantic seclusion amidst the beauty of the Italian landscape. But instead of love, they found only terror and death. A local farmer named Pietro Pacchiani was detained and charged with the monster of Florence slayings. The prosecution's case against Pacchiani appeared strong and the case made headlines. However, issues with the investigation's objectivity and concerns about Pacchiani's culpability surfaced. In a shocking turn of events, Pacchiani was ultimately found not guilty owing to inadequate evidence, rendering the case once more unresolved. It appeared that the justice system had failed to catch the monster of Florence. The probe went on, despite the setbacks. Fresh insights emerged as a result of re-evaluating the case and pursuing new leads. When authorities focused their attention on Mario Spadesi, a writer who had done extensive research on the Monster of Florence case, another suspect eventually surfaced in 2001. The narrative kept taking unexpected turns as arrests and legal disputes predominated. However, the monster of Florence's real identity remained a mystery, and the case is still one of the most eerie, unsolved mysteries in Italy. Now we shift our focus to the heartland of America. Prepare yourselves for the bone-chilling story of the BTK killer. The BTK killer's modus operandi was characterized by carefully planned home invasions. He would stalk his victims, break into their homes and then subject them to unspeakable acts of torture and murder. The chilling details of his crimes sent a wave of terror through Vichita as residents lived in constant fear of becoming his next target. The BTK killer reveled in taunting law enforcement and the media 
sending cryptic letters and packages that detailed his gruesome acts. Through these macabre communications, he sought recognition and validation for his sadistic deeds, leaving a trail of psychological torment for both the authorities and the public. The BTK killer vanished from view once the investigation went cold. Years slipped into decades, and Wichita residents continued to live in constant fear of his return. The BTK killer, however, reappeared in 2004, fueling the search for justice in a startling turn of events. He once more interacted with the press and the government through a series of letters reawakening the fear he had sown years earlier. These letters were the last major piece of information that law enforcement needed to bring the murderer to justice. A community left broken by raiders' atrocities felt relief and closure after his arrest in 2005. He displayed a terrifying lack of remorse in court, giving in-depth explanations of his actions and taking pleasure in the attention he received. Our next story takes us to the streets of Yorkshire, England in the late 1970s. The Yorkshire Ripper targeted women, brutally attacking and murdering them with a savage ferocity that gripped the entire community in fear. The Yorkshire Ripper's reign of terror began in 1975, with his victims ranging in age, background and profession. The ruthless tactics of the notorious Jack the Ripper were similar to those of the Yorkshire Ripper, who preyed on defenseless women out alone at night. When a hoax tape and a string of letters submitted to the police in 1980 claimed to be from the Yorkshire Ripper himself, the investigation underwent a significant change. As a result, the killer was wrongly identified and resources were diverted, which delayed the case's real breakthrough. Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper, wasn't actually found until 1981. A routine traffic check led to his arrest, and the investigation that followed painted a terrifying picture of a seemingly normal man with a dark and twisted compulsion. Sotcliffe's trial stunned the country by exposing the entire depth of his wickedness. He stated that instructions from God telling him to kill prostitutes were what motivated him. He ultimately received numerous life sentences after being found guilty of 13 murders and countless attempted murders. For our final chilling tale, we travel to California, where a trail of terror was left by the Golden State Killer. The Golden State Killer targeted both women and couples, often breaking into their homes in the dead of night. His victims endured unimaginable horrors, with the intruder displaying a chilling level of sadism and calculated control. The sheer brutality and relentlessness of his crimes struck terror into the hearts of all those who lived in his shadow. But in 2018, something new happened. Researchers were able to link evidence from the crime scenes to a suspect, Joseph James D'Angelo, thanks to advancements in DNA technology. Former police officer D'Angelo was detained and accused of a number of crimes that have been linked to the Golden State Killer. The news shocked the country because it revealed the identity of the man who had been wreaking havoc in communities for years. In 2020, Joseph James D'Angelo entered a plea guilty to a number of counts, giving the victims, his relatives and survivors some sense of closure. Thank you for watching. We hope this video has brought you some valuable insight and information, so don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe and click the bell icon.